So we've been in this series of messages uh, for a few weeks now on uh, uh, the Lord's Prayer, right? Jesus teaching when people, his disciples said, Lord, teach us to pray. And he said, okay, don't be like these people. Don't be like these people. Instead, here's how you pray. And it's uh, Matthew 6. When you pray, do not keep on babbling. You know, that's going to become my life. They're going to put this on my tombstone. <laughs> do not keep on babbling like the pagans, for they think they'll be heard because of their many words. Don't be like them, for your Father knows what you need before you ask. This then is how you should pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. So Lord, teach us. Teach us how to pray. How to teach us about your kingdom and your will and what might happen on earth as it is in heaven. Amen. <clears throat> you know, I, I misunderstood about prayer for a lot of my life, most of my life probably. Still do from time to time. I get it wrong. I've always uh, practiced prayer. I didn't believe this necessarily, but I practiced prayer. My practice of prayer was I was trying to get God to do my will up in heaven. If I could just get that, if, you know, if, if God could just hear me and my earnest prayers and, uh, and then cooperate with me up in heaven, that would be so good. And so now I'm finding out as we look at this passage that actually Jesus is saying, no, no, what we, what we want is uh, to pray for God's will to be done on earth. And I've had it completely wrong all of my life. Uh, instead of convincing God of doing my will, up there. He's been all along trying to convince me to let him do his will down here. And, uh, and so we pray right after we acknowledge our relationship with God. It's intimate. It's personal. Uh, it's not from afar. It's a, uh, our Father, Lord in heaven, hallowed be your name. After we acknowledge that, we go right into asking that his kingdom and his will would be done on earth, just like it is in heaven. It would be the same. No different. Now, um, this would be such an easier message to preach if we were in England right now. You know, if we were in London, they understand the king and the queen and the kingdom. They get that, you know. And, uh, and, and Dave, we were talking this week because you know tomorrow's St. Patty's Day, and, and he's an Irishman. But he made sure that I knew that he was a, he was from Belfast, and he says we honor the Queen. You know, we honor the Queen. We're, we're not like those others, you know, like my wife, you know, <laughs> citizen of the South. But the South always was rebellious, but uh, you know. So, um, but but the thing is that it, people understood kingdom here in the states. We don't get it. It's like. Thy kingdom come. What does that mean, even? Because we don't have that that concept for us. And and we've talked about this before. The kingdom is wherever the king rules, where the king's influence and character and love and presence and will is is present. That's the kingdom. And where the king's character and love and will is not present, that's not the kingdom. And so when Jesus uh, began his ministry, right at the very beginning, it says he came uh, proclaiming the kingdom of heaven is what? Near. It's right here. It's so near. It's, it's so close. God's rule, God's presence, God's will, God's love is so close. And uh, and now he says, we want to pray, pray that God's kingdom would be here on earth just like it is now. It would be no different. Now, this is a very um, a powerful, powerful passage because Jesus understood that there's a couple of different kingdoms. Right? There's a couple of different, and then throughout the Bible, uh, we hear about this. There, there's the kingdom of God, the kingdom of heaven. But then there's also a kingdom of darkness that's described in the Bible, throughout Scripture. 
and and Jesus talked about it. And there's a and there's a, a kingdom of this world. In fact, those of you who are classical music people and you you love the Messiah, you know, every every Christmas. Although when that was written, it wasn't allowed to be performed in church because it was too secular. But one of the one of the songs they sing is the kingdom of this world has become the kingdom of our God. That's what it is that, that Jesus is, is telling us to pray. That, that the kingdom of our God would take over and replace the kingdom of this world. And, and uh, the thing is that uh, I, I think Scripture tells us in, in, in creation, go way back to the beginning there in Genesis, uh, the kingdom of heaven and the kingdom of earth were the same. God's presence, His love, His care, all demonstrated here. No problem. And then, of course, problems came because uh, basically uh, Scripture tells us that, that people were dissatisfied that they only had a knowledge of good. And then they felt cheated. Remember? And, the, and the, the, the temptation was that they wanted a knowledge of good and evil. And God said, no, I really don't want you to have a knowledge of evil. No, we, we insist. We want a knowledge of evil. So we got the knowledge of good and evil. And the world stopped being the kingdom of God. But wherever the king rules, wherever his character, his love, his presence, his will is experienced, the kingdom of God is there, right? Right? And, and one by one, person by person. And it's not a political thing. You know, I, I was, uh, I, for a very short time in the 60s, I was a political science major in college. And uh, a few demonstrations later and uh, <laughs> changed the psychology. I don't know why. But uh, the thing was um, that uh, I really believe that, that, you know, when God got hold of things, it's going to change our government, our our social world, our economics, our way of being, you know? And and then I realized, whoa, that's not gonna happen. You know, nothing good can come of politics. But but there were people who still believed that, that this was a political thing. They thought if we could just get Congress to be all a bunch of Christians, then there would be peace in the land. You know, well, we know that didn't happen. And, and so, um, and so uh, John the Baptist, sitting in prison, is waiting for the, the political power to be just poured out in Jesus' ministry as the kingdom is, is brought. And he sends his people to see Jesus and said, are you the one? Or should we look for somebody else? Because you're not doing it the way I wanted you to do it. You're not doing what I told everybody you were going to do. You're not bringing it in the way I was expecting it. And Jesus' response to him is, okay, look and see. What, go back and tell him what's happening. This is happening, this is happening, this is happening, this is happening. And then he says, happy is the one who's not offended by me. If you're not offended by him because I'm not doing it your way. I'm not giving you what you expect. I realize oh, we can be so locked into what we think ought to be happening then we're basically offended when Jesus acts. When the kingdom of God's demonstrated, we get offended. Well, that's not what I thought was going to happen. You know? And Jesus said, you know, if you want to be happy, stop being offended by me. You know, recognize it, celebrate it, and, and, and learn to see how God's love and presence and character and will gets demonstrated one by one in people, and then it goes out and pray that that kingdom will be on earth just like it is in heaven. That, that we'll see God's, God's hand in that. Now, what's God's will in heaven? You ever thought about that? We've prayed this before. Anybody ever prayed this before? <laughs> Anybody ever been to church here? <laughs> Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. No one's ever explained to me how is God's will done in heaven? Because if we're going to see it done on earth, what is it? Well, if it's not a political system, and it's not an economic system, and it's not a social system, but it's not a religious system, we sure know that. What is it? Well, 
Um, remember Mother Teresa? Mm -hmm. Passed away a few years ago. She was uh, <laughs> brought. She didn't do this very often, but she was brought to uh, uh, to New York. There was this big uh, uh, focus on raising money for the poor and to make a difference in the world. And she was uh, going to be the speaker, or one of the speakers, you know. And when she got up, this this is what she said. This is, uh, Let us more and more insist on raising funds of love, raising funds of kindness, raising funds of understanding, and raising funds of peace. Money will come if we seek first the kingdom of God. The rest will be given. Maybe God's will in heaven is love and kindness and understanding and peace and that's how he wants to invade our world person by person and uh, everything else come do in fact Jesus says seek first the kingdom of, of heaven seek first the kingdom of God his righteousness and what everything else, everything else will be given to you you don't have to stake and claim, you don't have to fight for it, you don't have to put up your territory, that'll be given to you, but, but seek first the kingdom of heaven. And uh, in praying this prayer, basically, don't we become partners with God? If we pray, Lord, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven, that's not a passive prayer. That's not a, we're going to sit back and see what you do. Come on, Lord, do your stuff. <laughs> to pray this prayer is actually a very aggressive, assertive thing. Maybe one of the most assertive things we can do. It's not passive. It's not spectating. It's, it's saying, Lord, bring your rule, your love, your kingdom through me. Where I go, share your love. Share your character. Share your will. That means that as we pray this prayer, your kingdom come, your will be done. This is a simple prayer, right? As we pray that, we are actually asking God to transform us. It's not really about God change them. Because the kingdom of God comes in as he changes us. And then we begin to live that out in our in our way. And, uh, you know, I've always preferred uh, passiveness, you know, to, to, to getting involved. But, but I think that Jesus is saying, every time you pray this prayer, you're recommitting yourself to be, and opening yourself up to be used by God to bring in his kingdom of love, kindness, understanding, peace. And that, and that that's what we bring. Now, as a pastor, I got to tell you, I like doing things big and dramatic. Uh, you know, that's showy. You know, that's kind of usually superficial, but yet showy. And uh, and so, <laughs> forgive me for that. And uh, just a little honesty, you know. And uh, but I learned something. Um, I learned something this week, and uh, it started um, almost two years ago. Um, I volunteer on Fridays at the preschool, the path preschool at Harper Church downstairs and I started doing that last year um, they let me you know every <laughs> Fridays usually because it's a slow day <laughs> I can't do much damage and uh, but anyway that last year there was a kid I'm gonna have to change his name okay because this because uh, so I'm gonna call him Anthony okay uh, but um, he's a real kid last year Anthony was a terror he was he was horrible, and he was willful, and he was a biter. <laughs> he would bite. Kid. He bit me <laughs> on my arm, right next to the scar that I have from when our psychotic cat scratched me and then peed on it. <laughs> I still have that scar, and Anthony bit me right above it. You know, said so this tastes weird. No, <laughs> and, uh, he was. He was horrible. You, 
know who I'm talking about. Yeah. And, uh, he, and the teacher would say, oh, he's, he's, he's on the kids, he's everywhere, it's a nightmare. And, and one day, a knock on my door, and his mom came to see me and wanted to share about Anthony and uh, said, you know, he's, he's, I think he has ADHD, he has a lot of anger, he, he has no social skills, he seems really upset about everything and he can't get it together. And someone told me that you wrote a book called Coloring Outside the Lines because you're like that. <laughs> <laughs> Going, thank you, I think. I, <laughs> and, but as we shared, uh, I said, you know, yeah, I probably am a lot like that. And I was that kid, you know, and uh, all the way through. Never fit in. Always kicked out of school for fighting, that kind of stuff. And uh, always in the vice principal's office as I got older. And, uh, and she said, I don't know what to do. And I said, I don't either, you know. And, but, the next time I went in, I, I made, I got this idea. It was like, it's almost like God gave me this idea. Every time I said his name, I added two words. So I'd come in, I'd say hi to the kids, I'd see him, and I'd say, hey, my friend Anthony. Good to see you. And when he'd leave, hey, see you later, my friend Anthony. And I did this every single time I said his name. All last year, nothing, nothing. I did not get through to that kid. I did not help him. All the kids graduated to kindergarten except him. He was held back for another year at Path Preschool. So I came in this fall. I remember, okay, so every time, every time, I mean, it's a playing with toys. Hey, my friend Anthony, could you pass me that card? No, 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 no. He never looked at me. He never responded to me. And then, a couple of weeks ago, I came down, I was sitting down on my chair, and there was this little uh, valentine um, to Pastor John from, he wrote his name, Be My Valentine, and it has this little cartoon character in it. He left on my chair. So I kept it. Friday, we're going, you know, same stuff. It actually was a worse day than ever, you know. The teacher said, I don't know what to do. Everybody's bad. Everybody's like Anthony today, you know. And uh, I, I came in, did the same thing. And then uh, while we were playing in the, they call it the big house, the, the fellowship hall downstairs, it's the indoor playground when it rains. Um, I said, hey, my friend Anthony, thanks for that card you left on my seat. And he goes, what card? I go, I don't know. I came in, I sat down, there was a card from you. So I just want to thank you for that. Did it have a character in it? Yes, it did. Okay. And then he went off and did his stuff. <laughs> We're having snack time. And I made hot chocolate. And, uh, and we had little carrot sticks and celery sticks, and I was teaching them how to dip them in the chocolate, you know. <laughs> Drop them to the bottom so they really soak them up, you know, chocolate carrots, it's, it's kind of a thing. But uh, we're sitting there, and, uh, and Anthony looks at me and goes, Pastor John, am I your friend? First time any response, am I your friend? And I said, yeah, we've been friends for two years now. So we're friends. Yeah. Pastor John, can we be friends forever? <laughs> sure. Let's. Okay. Then he dipped, dropped his carrot and hot chocolate and went on. So about an hour later, the sun came out. We were playing out on the climbing stuff and everything outside. And a big fight breaks out. And Anthony is angry and stewing and crying, and the other kids are pushing him away, and, uh, and, and they won't play with him. And he's sitting on the side of the play area on the wood, so I go and sit with him. 
And uh, I go, well, what's going on? So they don't want to be my friend. They said, I can't be their friend. I can't play with them anymore. Why? Oh, just because I was calling them stupid. <laughs> so you told them they were stupid and they said they didn't want to play with them. Yeah. Well, yeah, okay. You probably wouldn't like that either, would you? No. And then he goes, Pastor John, does this mean you're not my friend anymore? No. I'm not dead yet. <laughs> you said we'd be friends you know, forever, so that means until I'm dead. So I'm not dead yet. You're not dead yet, so I guess we're still friends. And he said, what can I do? And I go, well, why don't you go over and say you're sorry and ask if you can play with me? Okay. So we did. I thought, for two years, I have done very little <laughs> in this kid's <laughs> life. Nothing that mattered. And it suddenly hit him, Pastor John, are we friends? Can we be friends? And when he embarrasses himself and says everybody's stupid and doesn't have any friends anymore, he says, did I ruin it? Now, I didn't intend to be a living sermon illustration, but it suddenly <laughs> hit me that, um, let's see if I can find it. John 15, Jesus said, as the fathers loved me, so I've loved you. Now remain in my love. If you obey my commands, you'll remain in my love, just as I've obeyed my father's commands and remain in his love. I've told you this so that my joy might be in you and your joy may be complete. My command is that love each other as I've loved you. Greater love has no one than this, that they lay down their life for their friends. You are my friends. Do you get that? You are my friends. I no longer call you servants. A servant doesn't know the master's business. I have called you friends. For everything I've learned from the Father, I've made known to you. You didn't choose me. I chose you and appointed you to go and bear fruit, fruit that will last. Then my Father will give you whatever you ask in my name. This is my command. Love each other. Love each other. So when we pray, Lord, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth, what does it mean? Will we let Jesus be our friend? Will we, will we let him in? Will we tell the people around us we're friends? We're friends. We're in this together. It's not, a, it's not duty. It's not religion. It's not a new social system. It's not a political thing. It's not economic. It's love. And Jesus says to us, are we friends? When we say yes, I believe God's kingdom comes on earth just like it is in heaven. When we say no, I'll hold out for a better offer, then it doesn't come. But when we say yes, we're friends. There's no limiting what God can do. The innocent through. Pray with you. Lord Jesus, we pray that your kingdom would come and your will would be done here on earth just like it is in heaven. And give us the courage to allow you to come in and take hold of us in a new way and that you would uh, strengthen us with your love and unleash us in the power of your love. That's our need. Jesus' name. Amen.